Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. We are a little beyond 48 hours since we put the grafted larvae down into our starter finisher. And after I show you the queen cells, how many that we've gotten to take, I want to talk a little bit more about what starter finisher means and also some of the other options out there because there is a lot. Now, I don't have a vel on right now. This is pretty much all nurse bees for the most part, so it's very gentle. Let me get this smoker out of the way. The wind just keeps shifting on us. Hopefully you'll have noticed the audio quality has gotten a little bit better. We purchased, um, we jumped a little bit more. The other microphone that we tried just did not work for us. This one seems to be working pretty good so far at reducing wind noise and just other things. But let's get down in there and see what is going on. Now it is fairly cool, and this is one of the reasons why I had the insulated top. The, uh, the bees are really densely packed onto the frames, keeping everything nice and warm. You see our pollen patties there. They've really consumed a lot of the patty. Thankfully, we're getting some pollen coming in today. Now, you definitely do not want to shake these things or drop them. It'll dislodge the larvae oftentimes. Now, I don't like using a bee brush in almost any situation except when it comes to this. This is a situation where a bee brush is very handy. Also keep in mind most of these bees are nurse bees and so they're much easier to handle. And I'm going to kind of show you what I do to prevent um, aggravating the bees more. And this is just an old Walter T. Kelly brush. I cut it down, make it a little bit smaller because I don't really like them being quite so large. Some people use grass even and some folks use feathers. There's a lot of different things you can use. I'm going to go ahead and put my veil on because I don't have a fondness for being stung on the nose and bees don't care for brushing. We're going to try to get this done quickly so we can put the queen cells back in. Now I, before we go any further, would like to say that for a hive this size, I like doing two bars of 15, but I really don't expect to get all of those. Really a hive this size, size I would expect if you're using it as a starter and a finisher, somewhere around 14 to 15 odd cells. You can get more than that, but really I don't plan on getting more than 15 good queen cells out of something this size unless we're using it just as a starter and not as a finisher. And I'll explain that more in a second. All right. So looky right there, and I'm not gonna get all these bees off of here. Look at those cells. They have not capped them yet. And they're drawing them out. Look at all the, well you can't really tell, but it's creamy all up there. I want to brush this off just a little bit more. It's all packed up there with royal jelly. That one's a little runty right there on the end. I'd probably cull that one out. There's always going to be a percentage of loss. This top bar did really good. This is the bar that I did after the video. This was the one I did during the video, and the takes were not nearly as good. And it's probably because they were exposed to so much air and um, cool weather. So the takes weren't near as good, but still, out of all of this, I'm going to at least get 15 good cells, I feel like. And that's not bad at all. You know, and then off of those 15 cells, depending on the time of the year, I'm going to expect somewhere around... You know, sometimes I'll get 90% to come back well mated. And then there's some times when the weather's bad, I might get 50 to 60%. So there's a lot of variables there. And so if you're needing 10 queens, um, try to raise 20 cells. And then out of that, expect to get 10, you know. Always try to raise extras. And if you end up with too many queens, share them with your bee buddies. But, but that's where we're at right now. I'm going to go ahead and remove this cell over here on the end. We are going to pull it apart so you can see what it looks like. Excuse me, bees. You can focus more of your energy on the other cells. How about that? I should use a hive tool for this. There we go. Now, especially once these cells get capped and more towards the end period, we definitely don't want to turn them upside down. Sometimes they'll slide back when those wings are developing and it'll damage those wings. Don't shake them. Don't turn them upside down. There is a period when you can turn them upside down. This is one of those times. Let's get them back in there so the bees can take care of them. Definitely don't want to overstress. Now, another important thing to know is that when you graft, 
you need to remove the queen cells no later than 10 days after and separate them out um, and, and get them to where they can't emerge from the cells as virgins and go around and kill each other. So day 10 is what we do, graft is considered day one, day 10 they're going into individual mating nucleus colonies. Get back in there and get to work. All right, yeah, they're really going at that patty. The weather has not been the greatest. We, we get good days and bad days. All right, so here we have, and let me know if you can see that, Laurel, a larvae. Look how much the thing's already grown in just a couple days. It's amazing. But what's even more amazing is that you end up with a large, fully developed female in just 16 days as the queen bee, instead of having a, a worker bee that takes 21 days and is not able to you know, be a queen. I mean, it's just amazing. So they got the royal jelly all down in there. But here's the thing. You know, this is the first round. You can do more rounds. After you pull that 10, you can do more. Shake some more nurse bees in there. If you have a frame of calf brood in there that's emerging out, that can help sustain that young population that you need. And you can, there's always a cell or two that seem a little runty, and you can cull that out, and you can prime several of your next round of cells with that. Just pull that larvae out, Put it back in there because the bees will cannibalize the larvae and reuse the proteins and fats to a degree. And then you have that royal jelly. Now many beekeepers will dilute royal jelly, one part royal jelly with one part distilled water. And of course you don't want it cool, but you can make it go further that way and I've heard that it gives very good results. And I mean these aren't just, you know, people who have just tinkered around with it. These are ex very experienced and professional beekeepers that use that method. And so that will make your royal jelly go further and help you prime your cups before you graft and make it easier for you to drop that larvae down in there. Now, getting to, let's, uh, let's put this on. Getting to the part of starter and finisher, what that means. So starter and finisher obviously starts the cell and it finishes the cell. There are other options out there. This is the simplest one. This is a, a good method for rearing a handful of queens, but again, if you were to sustain the young population and keep doing this, you could raise many, many, many cells over the course of a season with this method. And for a, a hobbyist, I think this is just perfect. Now, to get a higher acceptance on your queen cells, you need a larger population with more nurse bees and more nutrition, more of everything. And what we would do is we would graft, we would come back 24 hours later, and there's going to be a higher percentage of cell acceptance than that. And then you're going to take that out 24 hours later, and you're going to place it into a very packed double deep colony or larger. I prefer double deep. You're going to have the queen below an excluder at the bottom deep, making sure that he, she has plenty of laying room constantly. You don't have to go down there occasionally and check to make sure that they don't want to swarm, especially during the honey flow. And then above you're going to have a second box. And it's got to be, I mean, we're talking packed with bees. So you can even pull frames of brood from other colonies or shake some, uh, shake some bees in there to create what's called finisher. And you pull out of a colony that's this size or bigger, starting the cells 24 hours later, you pull it out. You put it into your double deep hive or whatever strong hive you want to put it into, but it needs to be massive. And this is what we use for larger amounts of queens. And I want to have that, fr that graft frame. Once I take it into that colony, I want to have the graft frame. I want to have a frame of young larvae next to it that encourages nurse bees to come up and be around those. And they're going to be really close to your queen cups that you've grafted. And then next to that, you want a frame of bee bread. You also want the pollen patties. Even if there's a little bit of a flow, um, pollen flow going on, throw a little bit of a patty in there. And if they take it, they take it. If they don't, you can remove it. But I always like to have it in there just in case. If there's no nectar coming in, you're going to feed sugar syrup. Make sure there's plenty of honey in the hive. There's got to be a lot of bee density. A lot of times, um, the colonies that we use for this um, should be about three or four deeps tall, and we, re we condense them down to two. And you can get some very, very nice cells and a lot of cells this way. And in a colony that size, you can easily um, have 45 cells going at a time in a colony uh, finisher that large. And the thing of it is, 24 hours later, you've pulled them out of this colony. So that means you could graft into this one again. 24 hours later, if you have another finisher, you can pull it and put it in that finisher, graft into this one again. You see how many queens we could possibly be raising 
It's a lot. Now you have to have a lot of bees to maintain this and this is why we focus more of our energy on smaller queen rearing, um, scale queen rearing, because I just feel that most beekeepers would find this more suiting for their situation. But I wanted to kind of explain this to you and also some beekeepers use massive hives as starters and finishers with a queen um, and it that still starts them as well it's not even queenless there's many many different ways to go about this this is just one way that we use so i just wanted to kind of share with you how the cells are developing i'm pretty excited we will be continuing to follow these cells and we'll be showing you when we remove them and place them into mating nukes and then and then go from there and then we're going to try a couple things like maybe raising some queens without grafting. And we're going to try to get some better pictures and photos if we get a chance. We have a lot of nucleus orders fixing to go out. And if you are one of the folks who have ordered a nucleus colony from us, be ready to check your email because we'll be sending you multiple things, educational, you know, times, just all kinds of different things. So if you haven't checked your email and you're getting nukes from us, check that email. Thanks for watching this video.